While many still doubt the quality of COMEX aircraft, even looking down on China's ability to build airplanes, Guillaume Fauri, CEO of Airbus, one of the two giants of the aviation world, has made a bold prediction about the industry's future. According to him, the long-standing duopoly may soon give way to a triopoly, with China's COMEX emerging as a formidable new rival. Specifically, the balance of power that Boeing and Airbus have maintained for decades is now being challenged by China's C919 jetliner, carrying what some call its secret weapon. As a result, the aviation world may be entering an entirely new era. What exactly is this secret weapon, and how does it make China's aircraft so powerful? Let's find out. Global airline executives are facing a serious dilemma. Demand for air travel is exploding, yet there simply aren't enough aircraft to meet it. Both Boeing and Airbus are so overloaded that new jet deliveries are being pushed years, sometimes decades, behind schedule. In this growing crisis, every airline on Earth is desperate for a new alternative. And that alternative may have just taken off from Shanghai under the name C919. This sleek, narrow-body jet was built to go head-to-head -head with the 737 MAX and the A320neo. On paper, it checks all the right boxes seating between 158 and 174 passengers, a range of around 5-500 kilometers, and operating costs that Comac claims are lower thanks to aerodynamic refinements and the use of lightweight composite materials. Add to that wider seats, larger windows, and a quieter cabin, and the aircraft starts to look like the perfect solution for airlines struggling to expand their fleets. With such specs, it's easy to see why Comac proudly boasts over 1,000 orders for the aircraft. But here's where things get interesting, because those numbers don't tell the whole story. If the C919 is really that capable, why aren't major airlines like Lufthansa Southwest or Delta showing interest? These carriers are facing record fleet shortages and endless production delays, yet they're not lining up for China's new jet. Instead, they seem more willing to wait years for Boeing or Airbus deliveries, or even keep flying older planes, rather than take a risk on this newcomer. Even more telling, most of those 1,000 orders come from Chinese state-owned leasing firms and airlines, not private or foreign customers. So what's really going on? What are international airline executives seeing that we're not? Stay tuned, because the next part will uncover the hidden truth behind the C919's rise. Comac has unveiled what it proudly calls its trump card, the Leap 1C engine developed in collaboration with CFM International, a joint venture between GE Aerospace US and Safran France. On paper, it represents a major step toward a greener, more efficient future. The LEAP 1C is claimed to reduce fuel consumption by up to 15%, cut carbon dioxide emissions by 15%, and lower nitrogen oxides by as much as 50%. It's presented as a showcase of cutting-edge innovation featuring ceramic matrix composite CMC materials that can endure extreme heat, ultralight carbon fiber fan blades, and even 3D printed components. For airlines facing rising fuel costs and increasing environmental pressure, it seems like the perfect answer. But here's where the mystery and the skepticism begins. Although it carries the same Leap name as the engines powering the A320neo and 737 MAX, the Leap 1C isn't quite the same. According to several insiders in the engineering community, Western partners deliberately held back their most advanced technologies when working with China. Fearing industrial espionage and intellectual property risks, they supplied a restricted version of the engine rather than the full next-generation design. In other words, the Leap 1C on the C919 is not a true peer to its Western counterparts. Many experts describe it as a downgraded derivative closer to an upgraded CFM56 from the previous generation than to the latest Leap 1A or 1B. This compromise came at a cost the engine is heavier, less efficient, and reduces the aircraft's payload and range. In commercial aviation, where profit margins are often measured in tenths of a percent, that loss in fuel efficiency can be a decisive disadvantage. This raises an uncomfortable question for airlines. Can the C919 truly be trusted? Boeing and Airbus have decades of proven reliability. Comac, by contrast, is still building its reputation. As a result, this engine stands as a technological paradox, a symbol of China's progress, yet at the same time a reminder of its dependence on Western technology. Realizing this, and also as a way to take revenge on the West Comic and AECC, have begun working on something that could change the balance of power in the aviation world. By the way, please take a second and hit that subscribe button. We know you're going to love what's coming next. Behind the debut of the C919, China's first domestically developed commercial jet, lies a secret weapon that could reshape the balance of global aviation power, the CJ-1000 jet engine. It isn't just the power source that lifts the aircraft into the sky, 
It's a symbol of Shanghai's determination for technological independence and its ambition to stand shoulder to shoulder with Boeing and Airbus. In 2017, COMAC and AECC, the Aero Engine Corporation of China, officially joined forces to create a completely indigenous engine, the CJ-1000. The engine was designed specifically for the C919 and is part of China's civil engine family, which includes the CJ500 for the smaller C90H9, the CJ1000 for the C919, and the CJ2000, a larger version intended for the wide-body C929. The goal is crystal clear to build an entirely made-in-China ecosystem of aircraft engines. Technically, the CJ-1000A is a turbofan engine with a high bypass ratio of around 9.1 and a thrust range between 30,000 and 31,000 pounds, putting it in the same league as advanced Western engines, like the CFM Leap 1A or Pratt & Whitney gear turbofan, which currently power the A320neo and 737 MAX. Its structure includes an 18-blade titanium fan, a three-stage low-pressure compressor, a 10-stage high-pressure compressor, a two-stage high-pressure turbine, and a six-stage low-pressure turbine. This design enables high performance while reducing fuel consumption and emissions, two key factors in the era of eco-friendly aviation. The first CJ-1000 prototype was completed at the end of 2017, just six months after the C919's maiden flight. By May 2018, it had already undergone its first ground run, and more recently, the engine has also been spotted undergoing flight tests on the Xi'an Y-20 military transport aircraft, signaling its transition into an advanced testing phase. According to AECC, the company aims to achieve type certification within this year, aligning perfectly with COMAC's commercialization timeline for the C919. However, what makes the engine truly significant goes far beyond its engineering, it's about what it represents. In today's tense geopolitical climate, dependence on Western technology is a major vulnerability. In 2020, the U.S. government considered blocking the export of Leap 1C engines to China, a move that could have forced COMAC to halt aircraft production altogether. And earlier this year, history nearly repeated itself as American suppliers once again faced restrictions under export bans targeting Chinese aerospace components. Although these issues were eventually resolved, they severely delayed the C919's development. For Shanghai, this served as a powerful wake-up call to succeed in aviation, it must control its own engines. The CJ-1000, therefore, isn't just a piece of machinery, it's a statement of national pride and industrial sovereignty. Of course, the road ahead won't be easy. Western engines like the Leap and GTF have accumulated millions of hours of flight experience, while the Chinese engine is still in its infancy, working to prove its reliability and safety. Gaining the trust of international airlines will take time testing and consistency. But even so, the CJ-1000 represents the greatest technological leap China has ever made in the field of civil aviation propulsion, an elite domain long dominated by the US, the UK, and France. If successful, this engine could not only help COMAC reduce costs and avoid political risks, but also pave the way for this country's next generation aircraft from the C919 to the future C929 to compete globally. It may not yet be the most powerful or advanced engine in the world, but it stands as undeniable proof that China is moving in the right direction toward building a fully independent aviation industry. It will take many more years before the engine earns the same trust as its Western counterparts, but history shows that no nation has ever risen to global prominence without taking difficult first steps. And with the CJ-1000 China has laid the foundation for a new era in aviation one where the world may soon have to get used to a third major player alongside Boeing and Airbus. After China's major progress with the CJ-1000 engine, another positive signal emerged this time from Southeast Asia. Brunei has officially become the first ASEAN nation to recognize China's aircraft certification system, paving the way for its airlines to operate COMAC aircraft, such as the C919 and C909. This isn't merely a technical milestone, it represents a clear diplomatic and commercial victory for China's civil aviation industry, especially after its earlier setback when Vietjet decided not to move forward with a COMAC purchase. Brunei's recognition by the KAT marks a significant regulatory breakthrough for the Chinese maker beyond mainland China. Each approval like this allows the maker to expand its international footprint, giving it access to more emerging markets across Asia. More importantly, it serves as a strategic diplomatic tool helping Shanghai advance its globalized domestic technology policy using massive state-backed financial support to project commercial and political influence through civil aviation. This approval also supports COMAC's campaign to position the C919 and C90H9 as viable alternatives to Western aircraft in emerging markets.
If other regional aviation authorities, such as those in Laos, Cambodia, or Indonesia, follow Brunei's example, the Chinese maker could begin building a certification corridor across ASEAN. Even if airlines in these countries don't immediately buy Comac aircraft, the mere presence of a credible competitor could pressure Airbus, Boeing, and Embraer to rethink their pricing and after-sales strategies in the region. Behind the scenes, this move represents a carefully calculated exercise of soft power by Shanghai. It's part of a larger effort to internationalize China's technological standards, much like its previous campaigns in high-speed rail and 5G telecommunications. The impact goes beyond economics. It could also reshape regional politics, particularly for Taiwan, as ASEAN nations might leverage COMAC's recognition to lower aircraft acquisition costs, boost air travel, and inadvertently undermine Taipei's influence in the process. Smaller or state-backed airlines across ASEAN, especially startups and regional carriers, may see Chinese aircraft as politically and financially attractive thanks to Chinese leasing financing and maintenance support. As the first ASEAN doors begin to open, the world may be witnessing the beginning of a new aviation order, one where China is an emerging force ready to compete on equal terms with the giants.